Hey guys, today I am actually going to address the deleted video. So the two videos from yesterday, if you actually listen to them, at that point in time I was making the videos, I had no knowledge he would delete them. They seem to be pretty, pretty uh, non, I mean, basically they were just uh, a video from Rudy. I didn't think it was anything too terrible. I didn't think it was anything dishonest. I thought that it was actually quite refreshing to see Rudy so honest. Basically, he talked about uh, the Ravnica Remastered. He was talking about how some people are going to order cases of the Collector's Edition, and some people are going to order a little bit of it, but how no one can trust Wizard of the Coast. So even if Wizard of the Coast tells you something, you cannot trust them, because that is what they talked about, Dominaria Remastered. So Dominaria Remastered is a very big red flag as to maybe what will happen to Ravnica Remastered, right? I mean, I, ideally, they would print less of it, but they just had massive layoffs. So money is a concern. So the first 15 minutes, 16 minutes was about Magic the Gathering. And in particular, it was about Ravnica Remastered. The next segment was about MetaZoo. Rudy had mentioned that he had... Um, contacted, I assume, MetaZoo Mike, and he was not getting any responses back, and therefore he felt it was very sad. He was not in the best mood, and he was talking about promos. He wanted to get some more promos, and Poncho actually had worked with him on many, many promos. So he had Poncho, where's the promos at? And then Poncho was like, oh, well, that's just MetaZoo owns the promos. So I'm pretty sure Rudy was trying to contact them for another drop, and they didn't respond back to him. The next part was about Flesh and Blood. And how most he blamed local game stores. That basically the local game stores said. And correctly so. That he was undercutting them. So they would no longer carry. They were very very. They talked to Legend Story. And said hey. This dude is undercutting us. We don't really like this. He's getting promos, he's getting playmats, he's getting all these exclusives. He even has a Rudy promo card of himself, which he set a bunch of them on fire and made, according to Pleasant Kenobi, over a million dollars on just that one card. So we don't love it. Um, you know, you're treating us unfairly. We're the lifeblood of the game that you are making. So if you don't act up uh, or you don't make Rudy compete, uh, then we are going to drop the game. So then... Legend Studio talked to Rudy and said, hey, Rudy, we need you to bump the price up a little bit. And that way uh, you're not undercutting every game store. Rudy said, nope, I don't like that. Uh, and I'm going to drop flesh and, or flesh and Blood drop me technically on by asking me to raise my prices and compete against these other game stores. So Rudy was very angry at these game stores. Um, obviously, it's more than one. I imagine the large majority of game stores feel the same way about Rudy. I felt that same way. That the reason, you know, people say, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. Why don't you just copy Rudy's model? Your model is archaic. Rudy's model would mean no gameplay. Like, do you guys understand that Rudy's model means no gameplay? He doesn't have any employees. He doesn't have any place for you to sit down and play or talk to him or any of this stuff. He doesn't want to do that for you. So if every game store adopted Rudy's model and just tried to sell the shit, there would be no game. The game you have to play. And that's why I think MetaZoo has zero chance of success because I don't see nobody playing this game. I don't see any game local game stores being okay with Rudy undercutting them. Or a partner, or partner undercutting them. Right? I, I don't see it happening because these game stores, they can just carry more Funko Pops. They can just do Pokemon. They can do Disney Locana. The game store I went to the other day did Disney Locana, and it's a big part of their uh, organization. It's quite fascinating to see this, but there are other games out there, not just your game. Your game is actually not that special. After 2020, there was an influx of games, One Piece. I was actually talking to my friend Angelo today, and he's got a friend who wants to open a game store. But um, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, uh, I, I just told him, hey, man, like, I, I got to see the store. I have to 
go to the store. I have to like figure things out. Opening a game store is not crazy in my opinion right now because r people like Rudy are getting hosed. These games, their lifeblood isn't Rudy. It's the player base. And if everyone copied Rudy, this is what I don't understand. When I made that video like, oh, the store bankrupt because of Rudy's pump and dumps. I'm not kidding. That's what every game store feels. That is what every game store in America feels, at least in America, feels. When your customers are buying online from somebody and that somebody's not providing a place to play, that somebody's not providing a safe environment or insurance or electricity or heating or whatever it is, right, internet, cable, then, um, yeah, I mean, you are entitled to copy Rudy's model, but don't be surprised if your game is dead because of it. So at the end of the day, you know, the game stores, you know, I was actually talking and game stores have a lot of options. They got One Piece, they got Disney Locana. Those are two brand new card games that are doing very well. You got Weiss, right? Um, I still don't think Weiss, I don't think any Japanese game will ever collab with uh, with uh, Rudy. I almost called it Anthony Farrar. <laughs> In my mind, he's kind of the Anthony Farrar, right? Uh, you guys can get that from the other channel. Uh, they just won't because he's toxic to the game. Like, you understand that, like, I watched Flukenbox, whatever, and he was, he's right, you know, and he actually had the same assessment I did. Then in the beginning, Rudy was necessary, but as the game grows bigger and it becomes more player-based and more game-focused, Rudy doesn't know what game cards are being played. He doesn't even know anything about these games. He doesn't know anything about MetaZoo. He's just flipping stuff for money. But at some point in time, your game actually needs his players. Right? It's a trading card game. Right? It needs people to play the mother effing game. If everyone's flipping and flipping and flipping, I mean Like what why? Like well why? Like what would be the point of that the game will die, right? If it's just a bunch of investors selling to each other for more and more money, eventually the money is gonna run out and there won't be no more investors. It's really that simple. So anyway, that was the flesh and blood, blood segment, segment, and then he kind of just breaks down and goes crazy at the very end of the uh, video. I do feel bad for Rudy because his business model is now no longer, you know, pe flesh and blood clearly doesn't want it. He does. They do not want to give Rudy any undercutting of uh, the ability to undercut their game stores because the game store can just say, yo, F you, I'm going to move on to Disney Locana. Disney Locana doesn't have a Rudy chance. There are no alpha investment cards in Disney Locana, and there never will be. I, I, I promise you that. Digimon, One Piece, Weiss, they will never have a Rudy card in their games. I promise you that. These games over from Japan, they would never even consider this. Right? Currently, Rudy has probably the top, out of the top 15 most expensive Meta Zoo cards, they're all his promos. Think about that for a moment. So what if the guy that you made so many promos of is going to drop your game? This is a good question. 